Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we're going to set up Lightroom to print on a specific paper with a specific color profile. So there's a couple of things we need to gather first. We need to go get an ICC profile for our paper or create one ourselves. And we need to gather some information about the paper stock that we're printing on. First, let's talk about getting an ICC profile. An ICC profile is a data file that really just helps to fine tune color representation for your printer and paper combination. And that's important to know. These are very specific to combinations of printers and papers. Now you may create your own ICC profile using a calibration device like the X-Rite i1 Studio. And I've put a video out on that to show how that works. And I'll put the link down below here. Or you can just get them from your uh, paper stock manufacturer and I'll show you how to do that here. I use Red River Paper for my printing and they have a wonderful library of ICC profiles. So I'm going to go up to support and color profiles and here just find my printer. You could use the uh, little pop-up dialogues here to work your way through it or you know it's not that an exhausted list so you can find your printer pretty quickly. Mine is the SureColor P800. And then here we see we've got the list of all the different papers and I can download an individual ICC profile for the papers that I use or I could download them all at one time. I tend to get the just the, the profiles that I need. And so uh, I'm printing on this particular paper quite often. I'll go ahead and click on that and just start the download. Once the profiles are downloaded to your computer, you have to put them somewhere so your applications can find them. On a Windows machine, it's pretty straightforward. You right click on the ICC profile and say install profile. On Macintosh, it's a little more involved. So we have to go into the finder and here is the profiles that I just downloaded. And there's an instruction sheet that comes with it. Red River is really nice about giving that. And here are the different profiles that are part of this paper set. So I've got gloss and I've got luster. I need to put that into library color sync profiles. And the only little trick for this is if you hold the option key down on the Mac and then click go, you'll see library show up. If you do not have the option key by default, you notice it's not there. If I press the option key, you'll see library show up. I release it, it goes away. So that's the only little trick to find that you know, little hidden library option. But then from there, it's a simple drag and drop. You take your files, you drag them over into the profile area. And then once you start up your applications, Lightroom, On1 and so forth, these color profiles will be recognized and available when you want to print. Another thing to check is any specific printer settings that your paper stock might need. There's the basics such as glossy versus matte versus luster, but there's also more detailed things like if it's a thicker paper, do you need to make any fine tune adjustments in the printer driver so that your printer will be able to accept that? Now with Red River Paper, every time you get a box of paper, they include you know a basic sheet that has all the details on what you need to set for your printer settings. They also have all of this online and I like the online versions because they also have you know diagrams and uh, screenshots of what you need to set up. So I'm gonna go into support again here from Red River Catalog and here printer setting recommendations. Now this one is based on the paper types and so we can pick a paper type. I started with this one here so I'll click on that and we can see here is all of the settings that we may need to worry about. So I'm looking at Epson, that's my printer, so I want to set the paper type to either glossy photo or premium glossy and choose best photo with this DPI. It's also avoiding turning on these settings and you know scrolling down to make sure there's nothing else. Now what's nice is they'll have sections on handling and then notice here it says after the print is complete. Now some other papers have sections for before the print is complete. I want to show you one of those. Let's take a look at this 96 pound Picos Gloss. This is a very heavy paper. And as I scroll down, I see the basic information about print quality and what type of paper to use. And important notes about the heavy paper, one sheet at a time. Information about what printers are recommended and which printers are not recommended for this paper. That's an important thing to know. As we get into before the print, we have detailed information on printer properties. And in particular, we're setting things like paper thickness. This is a thick stock, so you're fine tuning your printer settings to make sure that this paper is gonna work well with your printer, your printer's gonna behave nicely, and you're gonna get a good print. So checking out these types of resources before you go ahead and start printing, and sometimes in cases before you purchase the paper, making sure your printer is gonna be happy with it. Really good idea to do. 
Now that you have your ICC profile installed and you have the information about your paper stock, we're ready to set up a print template in Lightroom's print module. There's three things we're going to focus on. In the lower left, we have page setup. That's where we'll set our printer and paper size. We have print settings. That's the specifics about your stock, the type of surface. Is it glossy? Is it matte? The thickness of the paper. And then on the right hand side, we have things for our cell sizes and down here at the bottom, color management. Let's just start by using one of the Lightroom supplied templates. Since I'm working with an eight by 10 sized piece of paper, that's as good enough a place to start as any. And from here, we'll start configuring things. Let's go to page setup first. And I've chosen my printer. And then paper size, I have a bunch of different choices. Well, I'm on an eight by 10, so let's find eight by 10. And I'll do borderless and just click okay. Next, I'll go into the printer settings. And I want to do a few things here. Now I have presets set up already for the paper styles that I use most often. Let me show you the steps that I went through to create those. So in the future, when I'm going for another sized print, but I have the same type of paper, I can quickly just choose the right paper stock that I need. So this is really defining the paper stock. There's two important places here. Now color matching, this one is first and foremost, and we're going to see we have Epson has this thing called Color Sync, and I can choose a profile from here. Uh, this has all the different profiles that are installed, and of course other profiles, we will see things including like the Red River profile I downloaded earlier in this video. Now this is one way to do your color management. I actually choose to do my color management in Lightroom and keep this you know, purely separate. That's just a personal preference, but you can do it here. I'll go ahead and, and choose okay for now. There's nothing wrong with that. Paper handling is pretty much standard stuff as is cover page, really don't want one, just want to print my photo. Print settings, quite important. In the basic area, you're gonna follow the instructions that you gathered. You got your sheet feeder. In this case, I'm doing a glossy print. We saw this 1440 DPI here, as well as finest detail. In the advanced section, you can just double check to make sure you have things set the way that you want to. Paper configuration, you can see page layout is uninteresting, but paper configuration is the other page to visit. And this is where you can define anything that is special, especially for those thicker style papers. Once you've got all these things set for Mac, and I believe Windows has the same facility, I'll go into the presets and I will save these as a current preset. Now I've already done this. I've saved it as my printer name, the name of the paper, and I include the weight with the paper because different weights of the same paper stock or the same surface might have different settings, especially those thickness values. So I like to include the weight in the name and I'll do save and okay. Now the last bit to do is setting up the actual size of the print. And so here I have margins, which I don't want. We'll just get rid of those margins, all right? And the cell size is going to be 10, eight. And so now we have a nice full borderless print. And this is where I do my color management. I like to do the color management in Lightroom. The same type of information that we saw in the printer dialog where we pop up the different profiles, those are also here in Lightroom. And I can do the same thing. I can choose other. If I don't see the one that I want, I can choose other. I get a full list of all the different profiles that are installed. And I can select which ones I want to be displayed in Lightroom. So just the papers that I print on most often, the profiles that I care about most often are here, including ones that I've created myself. This one I created with the x ray i1 Studio. So I'll just choose OK, and I will select that from this list. And I'll choose the one that I created. I know it matches my exact printer and paper, and it's aligned with my monitor. I want to show you what that does to the printer settings. If I go back into those printer settings, Recall in the color matching area, these are all now grayed out. I don't have color sync, I can't choose a profile. I'm letting Lightroom do that work for me. Either way is okay. There's no one way that's wrong or one way that's right. As long as you are setting your color management to use one of those profiles that you've downloaded or created. Now the last thing to do here, so you don't have to repeat all of this work, is to save a new template. And so let's just save this as a new template. I'll just call it test. 
and I can create that and now I have a test template so the next time I come in and I want to create a new print I'll just choose that template and start working now of course it's a good idea to put a little more logic into the name of that template than just test you can see some of the ones I have here I have you know 16 by 20 polar pearl metallic I had one with just the Red River profile the one with the x-ray profile I would advocate using the size and the type of paper that you're using if you have multiple printers work the printer name in there as well but uh, if chances are you probably have just one printer at home so get the size and the paper stock and so I'll choose this one here and we'll see this is now changed I've got a little bit of a border but my cell size is much larger it's near a uh, 16 by 20 print if I were to pop into the page setup you know we'll see that information here that was all previously saved as part of this template and the same thing with the printer settings I had that same paper just a different size and I have my color management already selected to a particular ICC profile to match that paper so to recap things you want to go grab an ICC profile for the printer paper combination that you have or go create one yourself with a calibration device and gather information about your paper stock for any special printer settings there might be for in particular for thickness or for the surface if there's a recommendation for matching your printer driver to the paper stock itself and lastly go into Lightroom set up the size the printer settings and color management and save all of that as a print template in the print module and then repeated prints will become much smoother and much simpler and that will wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to have some fun printing. My name is Scott Davenport, and thanks for watching.